Uh, we're working in our office in several uh, public-private partnerships. Uh, they have to, been described here uh, in several cities uh, in this country and around the world. Uh, I have some American projects here. Those two are in Washington, D.C. Uh, I won't go into the projects very uh, at length, but it's basically the similar. It's a, basically a very similar scheme or similar uh, idea where the city or some of the city agencies, for whatever reason, have some uh, uh, properties, have some assets that uh, have been sort of sitting there or have been underutilized. And it comes the time when the city uh, has the opportunity to develop them and bring in other kind of infrastructure to the city that is needed. But uh, perhaps uh, e either they don't have the, the money or the financing isn't there or for whatever reason, it's convenient to partner with others that will help them uh, serve their purposes. Uh, these are very complicated projects. You know, they, uh, everybody has been very optimistic about it. Uh, I, particularly in the United States, am not very optimistic for the only reason that usually the developers' interests and the developers' culture and the bureaucracy's interest and the bureaucracy's culture are very disaligned. And, and, and that sometimes, you know, hopefully, you know, fortunately they're done, but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, they're very mellowed down and they lose a lot, especially because of financial disalignments, uh, time disalignments, and just vision disalignments. Uh, hopefully they, that will be able to get fixed. Nevertheless, the good thing is that they're happening. Uh, these two projects are in Washington, D.C., and it's basically very similar to what's happening in Brooklyn, and I'll get to the Brooklyn one very soon. Uh, one of them uh, is uh, basically was, it's a site that was occupied, the one on the left, used to be occupied by one of the main, or the most important, or the biggest branches, I would say, of the Washington Public Library. Uh, and then the rest of the uh, development uh, rights were obviously not being used. So the library, in one of their, uh, of their uh, programs, to basically be able to, to get uh, more box for their assets, decided to go out uh, and, and sort of offer this, uh, uh, this land, again, to a, to a, to a, in, in a competition sort of kind, to a developer, uh, where the developer is, again, building the same amount of uh, of square feet or of cubic feet, what, however you want to count them, uh, to, to uh, building another library because the library will still remain there. And what happened before is that the, the before library was very obsolete, and it and the building was in a huge disarray. So something had to be done. So now the library will have a new library, a, a, a state of the art library, and on top of it, the developer is able to develop. Uh, basically, these are two buildings in one, uh, and they're all condos and apartments that will be placed above the, 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 uh, the library, which basically completes the opportunity of, of, the, of the site to be completely developed. The other one, it's, it's just a block away. They're both in a place called Foggy Bottom. Uh, the other one uh, uh, was, was utilized, and it's exactly the same story, was utilized by a fire station. So the fire station was completely obsolete, it didn't work, it had tons of problems. So here, the developer gives back, you know, builds back another fire station and has the opportunity to develop the rest. In this other case, it's not all, uh, that's the one on the right, it's not all residential. It has a, a, a sport facilities of different kinds, basically sport clubs, a private sport clubs, and then a little bit of residential uh, on top. Uh, this other one is in San Francisco. Uh, and what I should say is that we, we've, uh, we've been lucky enough, or I would say, to work on both sides, because usually these projects have uh, very clearly two sides, the public side, the government side, and then the private side. So in the previous ones, we, our client, 
it was the developer or is the developer. They're both under construction. In these two next, next ones, our client is the public uh, uh, institution. In this case, it's a, muse it's a museum in Washington, in, in San Francisco, I'm sorry, on, on uh, Jesse Square, right in the south of Market area on the Yerba Buena Gardens. So we're hired, in this case, we're hired by the institution, by the museum that had bid to occupy the public space that was part of this development. So it was public land that was sort of leased or sold to, to a developer. The developer develops uh, a big tower next to it. But then one of the components is the museum. And we were hired by the museum, by the institution that had won the bid. So it's been very interesting also to be on one side and to be uh, on the other side. Uh, this other one, it's very similar. Uh, it's, the, it's a branch of the New York Public Library that we just completed uh, a few weeks ago. It was opened. It's on 53rd Street, and it's, it's very similar. The New York Public Library, which you know very well, uh, decided to go on some new projects. They didn't have the money. They had tons of assets that were probably very much underutilized. This has been a very controversial project, not because of the architecture, but because there was a very beloved uh, building here, a, a library, a branch of the library called the O'Donnell Library. So many of you may know about it. So it was, uh, the, the, I would say the neighbors weren't very happy uh, because they were losing, quote unquote, the O'Donnell Library. Uh, uh, we came way after, you know, we were hired by the New York Public Library. So my, our clients, again, were the, the government agency. In this case, the government, same thing, you know, the New York Public Library decided to consolidate their assets, sell their underutilized assets, or in exchange of getting back both, both money and space. In this case, uh, some developer bought it, uh, a, very, uh, a large building. I will not comment on the, on the architecture of the building. It's not my role here. Uh, nevertheless, uh, when we came in, ba basically the contracts were all signed and we were assigned certain spaces here that we needed to convert them into a new library that would be substituting the O'Donnell Library. Now it's opened, uh, you know, we're very happy, not everybody's very happy, but you know, you cannot make everybody happy in this. <laughs> and therefore, uh, I guess this will lead me in, I try to be brief to the to the BAM cultural district. Uh, I'll make a little bit of history. You know, everybody's doing history, so so I'll try to do my own. We we started working uh, on this project in 2001. So maybe of, so many of you were little kids still. <laughs> we, that's how long architecture takes, uh, and we're just about to complete. I would say part of it. So after 15 years, we'll be completing part of it. Uh, the history is, yeah, we started working, uh, as Claire and Susie have described, very early on uh, with, with the same uh, characters they've described. Uh, because uh, uh, at the time, the city, uh, the city or that district with BAM uh, issued uh, or, or, uh, an invited competition, it was an international invited competition, to build on that side, on that triangle, what was then going to be a very important branch, it was going to be the arts branch for the Brooklyn Public Library. Uh, uh, so we were lucky enough to win that competition at the time. And we worked with the Brooklyn Public Library for many years, like for five or six years. Uh, there were many changes. Uh, uh, three directors changed. Uh, so it was really a very convoluted and complicated process until the, the last of, the, of that series of directors uh, decided with, with, with her staff that they just could not do the project. The project then died. They say we cannot raise the money, we cannot get the money that is needed for that sort of very visionary step that the library, the library system had taken. And uh, they decided to basically give back the land 
to the city or to the district. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, at the time then, uh, and, and this is uh, several years ago, the city or whatever uh, group that represented the city decided to issue a, an RFP, a, a design build sort of competition, it invited, uh, well, or opened it up to several developers. And uh, we had a long history with the site. And at the time we were working with two trees that was mentioned before by, uh, by uh, Jim's partner. Uh, and uh, we were working with them on the Mercedes house on the west side that you may all be aware of. So they called us and said, listen, we're, we're really interested in, uh, would you call, you know, in, in submitting for this, for this competition, would you be willing to do it with us? So we said, sure, you know, you know it's another sort of iteration of, of what we had done. And basically, uh, at the time, in, uh, uh, what was requested, and, and I think it was a great RFP, as a matter of fact, uh, it was uh, very smart, very intelligent by the city. They had realized that it was very difficult for the, for the city to provide that cultural, uh, cultural infrastructure, which uh, it is sort of their responsibility to provide. Also, you know, I don't want to go into all the tax issues and the benefits that that brings with them, but it is a responsibility. That's what cities do. And the only way to do it was to partner with somebody that could put the money by getting another benefit in developing that cultural infrastructure. So the city or the district were very clear on what they wanted and basically what they wanted is to be able to substitute the same amount of a, a usable a area, again, either square feet or square or, or cubic feet, it doesn't matter, that they had assigned for, for cultural infrastructure, which was basically a third of the, of the uh, capacities, the development capacities of the site. And the other two thirds could be used by, that, by whoever that developer that would be winning the competition uh, to their own benefit. So several developers, I guess, uh, I don't know who or how many proposed, and I we were lucky enough to be on the team that eventually uh, won this project. And that's how we moved forward with a completely different uh, a project like the other project, obviously you know what's was of no use anymore, uh, and with obviously uh, many new challenges. Now instead of having one cultural institution, there are four cultural institutions somehow that have had to uh, be part of this uh, uh, of, of this project, and uh, it is. Again, one third of the project, base, more or less, one third of the project is private uh, in its apartments, it's all rentals, it's apartments and retail spaces. And one third of the project is utilized by public institutions, uh, by, uh, by, cultural, by cultural institutions, I'm sorry, that will somehow rent, uh, I would say somehow subsidized space from the city. And the, and the private uh, development basically pays for the construction of the uh, cultural uh, spaces. Uh, okay, having, having said that, uh, this is a very complicated site. Uh, the site, uh, as you can see, uh, just from a geometric point of view, is sort of uh, incredibly complex. It's a very acute triangle very difficult to utilize, plus from an infrastructure point of view, in every one of the three, of the three streets, there are uh, subways. Uh, plus, there is a very important electrical vault in the site. Plus, the city wanted to replace all the parking that existed in the pre This triangle was used as a public parking for BAM before before the, the development. So there were really a, an enormous amount of restrictions into this site. Okay, uh, nevertheless, you know, for, for us really the challenge was how to create public space. And one of the issues that we very soon realized 
is that you know being such a difficult site, the, uh, we decided to create this sort of very long building. The building also responds to the best util utilization of areas for a residential building, which is not always the same as for other kinds of buildings, as, as you probably all understand. And very very soon we came to 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 realizing that the only way to accommodate all the different cultural institutions would be to stack one on top of the other. But what we did not want to do is that this would become sort of like an office building connected by, by elevators or by escalators, or sort of like we didn't want it to become like a, a mall of culture of some sort. Like you go into, into a lobby and then take escalators or elevators to get, and we, and, and our purpose was always that if we had all of these cultural institutions, culture, every one of them has the right to access directly, for, directly from public space and to utilize public space. You know, a public space as the democratic sp space of a society like ours. A, and because uh, we didn't have the, the kind of, of land to do that, and we also didn't have the topography to do that, we needed to create what we have called an urban topography. We needed to create our own, our own topography that would allow us to achieve that purpose. And that's how after sort of, uh, here you see on the, on the right, the stacking of, of all of the functions. Now obviously the, the developers ha had their own interests, like they wanted all of the retail space, accessing directly from the sidewalk, you know. So, so there were all kinds of issues. So uh, after we sort of were able to accommodate, you know, everybody's sort of uh, expectations, then it was our stack, our, our uh, goal or our, um, uh, our uh, responsibility to create a new topography that doesn't exist in the city or in Brooklyn that could, could have helped us negotiate all of those conditions. And that's how we created this sort of ascending uh, plaza, ascending square, which should have been completely open to the public. Uh, now, I should say, and that's where, where the interests are not aligned or the times are not aligned. Uh, it's, uh, as of now, it's only accessible, half of the plaza is accessible to the public, the other half is not, which sort of cuts off part of the main idea of the project. We're still fighting. You know, if we fought for 15 years, maybe we'll need to fight another 15 years, but we'll keep on fighting. Those are the times of, this, of bureaucracy, which are very different to the times of developers. Developers go very fast. Obviously, they have financing. They're paying interest. Uh, the city goes very slow. So we need to sort of try to negotiate between both and do the best we can and then keep on, keep on working. So basically, that, that, that's sort of like the main idea, how to create new public space in the city. Uh, that goes back to all of us. You know, how can we utilize all of that public space? Uh, how do we create a new sort of typology of public space uh, in a city like New York? And, and these are some of the, of the renderings that we have eventually proposed. Uh, the, the landscape uh, was done by Ken Smith uh, in, in, this, in this plaza. And we, we are responsible for all the, all the architecture and basically uh, you know, the, the, the transformation of the topography. Uh, here we have a view of the, of the site. You know, also the shape of the building, many people ask me that. That was one of those uh, also uh, simplistic city observations. They said you cannot cover from downtown Brooklyn the site of the tower of the savings bank. So we needed to start sort of like manipulating the forum in order to expose, uh, which gave us other opportunities. There's a very beautiful terrace on the 30th something floor that is also being designed by by field operations. So it's gonna be a very unique and special space up there. And this is the, the building under construction, as it is now. A part of the building, although it's by far not finished, it's still under construction, but nevertheless, some of the apartments are going to be occupied. They're already being rented. The, rent, the rents are outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
uh, but, but they're going to start being occupied next month. Thank you very much.